Jeff Garcia came home this week to be inducted into the San Jose Sports Hall of Fame. Ever the fascinating conversation, Garcia reflected on his time as a 49er, what it might take to fix Colin Kaepernick, and how the downfall of this 49er team compares to the end of his tenure in San Francisco. It begins with his honor into the Hall of Fame. To be honored in this way, to be a kid from Gilroy, grew up right down the road, went to San Jose State, uh, basically a local boy, a hometown boy, playing for the 49ers, all those things. Uh, it's really been a spectacular journey for me, and uh, it's something that took a lot of hard work and dedication and perseverance mm -hmm. in a lot of ways. Perseverance is an understatement when it comes to Jeff Garcia. They called him too short, too skinny, questionable arm strength. But Bill Wall saw something else when he coached Stanford against San Jose State. Played against him. Uh, he saw some things on that field that day in a losing effort on our side uh, that he spoke of in the media. And he mentioned things like he did some Joe Montana-like things. Well, after the season, I was my senior year. I went to Bill Walsh. I visited with Bill. Hey, Bill, I know you have contacts around the National Football League. If you believe in me, would you please be able to put out a word for me? Well, it didn't lead to an opportunity right then, but it, what it did was create a relationship. Garcia to the corner of the end zone, Allen Pitts, touchdown. Garcia became a star in the Canadian Football League, leading the Calgary Stampeders to a Grey Cup victory in 1998. It was then that Walsh rejoined the 49ers, and among his first moves, Jeff Garcia. When I worked out for Bill, when I worked out for the 49ers and they put that contract in front of me saying they want to mm -hmm. sign me, I, I didn't even have representation at the time. <laughs> I said, where do I sign? I don't even know how much this is for. I just want to be here. Garcia made the team as Steve Young's backup, but his opportunity came far too soon for 49er fans. Well, that is a, uh, a sight that is the last thing in the world the 49ers would want to see. It looks Arizona's Aeneas Williams blindsided Steve Young. It would be the last play of Young's career and the beginning of Jeff Garcia as the 49ers starting quarterback. That was your moment in the NFL. That was, hey, here's Jeff Garcia. Were you ready? I didn't think that Steve would not come back at some point. I don't think any of us thought that that would be his last play in his career. And I really looked at my opportunity with the 49ers kind of similar to my opportunity in Canada where I backed up Doug Flutie for a year and a half before I saw the field. I got to learn from one of the best that was playing the game up there. I thought I was going to learn from one of the best playing the game down here and get to watch Steve and maybe in a couple years I take over. Well, it happened sooner. We did win that first game. We won my first start yeah, against yeah. Tennessee. But then things started to go downhill a little bit and I struggled and uh, I got benched for a few games. and. It took that benching for me to realize that, hey, things were changing with the 49ers. It wasn't the same team that I grew up watching. They were a little older at this point. They needed to kind of have a turnover of players and some things had to happen there. And I think we weathered that storm and we turned it around quickly and we started to win a lot of games. Do you think, and I know you're a coach for uh, the uh, St. Louis Rams, so you, you can't say too much, but you were benched in a way that you were able to sit back and observe things and maybe learn things from not playing football. Uh, could K Colin Kaepernick be in a similar situation? I think it can work for him in that sort of way. He has to have the approach like, hey, I'm going to get better. I'm going to learn from what I'm not doing on the field and what I can potentially do to help this team win football games. And I think he really has to take that approach. He's played a lot of good football in his short career. I think part of it is going back to when he was successful, what made him successful, and how can he get back to being that guy. I know that as a young quarterback, uh, when the negativity starts to flow your way and those fireballs are coming, I, it's not easy to block it out. It's not easy to just move forward and not think about it. Following the 49ers playoff appearance in 2002, John York fired Steve Mariucci during a phone conversation. Then general manager Terry Donahue oversaw years of failed drafts, including top picks Quame Harris, Mike Rump, and Rashawn Woods. The 49ers let several key players go, and eventually Jeff Garcia was the last straw. You're a three-time Pro Bowler with the 49ers. You'd led them to the playoffs. There was a rebirth there, and then it ends, and it ends really sort of unceremoniously, like 
There w wasn't a really plan for the 49ers. Do you regret the way you left the 49ers? Uh, it was unfortunate. I think you can really see some similarities to what just currently happened to what happened back there in 02 when they fired Mariucci, 03 when they started to release a lot of the higher priced players on the team. Not only was it me, it was Garrison Hurst, it was Terrell Owens, it was we had offensive linemen that were released that uh, really were the heart and soul of that team in a lot of ways. And uh, when you lose players that are that impactful on your team and that productive, they're tough to replace. And you brought in a coach in Dennis Erickson that had to assume half of a staff and an offense that wasn't his. I was asked to take a reduce in salary. Uh, I felt like I had earned that salary. I was playing on incentive-based salaries. I wasn't playing on guaranteed money. I was playing on on bonuses that I had earned through my play on the field, and it had gotten to a point where they just didn't want to pay that price. It was the 49ers that paid the price. Seven straight seasons without a winning record. Garcia would go on to lead the Eagles and the Buccaneers to the playoffs before retiring for good in 2011. He is now an assistant coach for the St. Louis Rams with, as you might expect, much higher aspirations. I could see myself one day, if I continue along this path in this journey, being a head football coach. And don't count him out, Jeff Garcia. Still to come, there is at least one player with a case of big game fever. And Stanford tries to put a positive spin on their crushing loss to Oregon. First, we continue with countdown to Super Bowl.